you so much for being here today. We're super excited to get to interview you. I would love if you could introduce yourself. Ah, thanks, Courtney. I appreciate the invite to be on the show. Uh, so my name is Steve Beauchamp, and I am a continuous improvement uh, practitioner and mentor. I'm also a, a leadership coach and have been doing all of these things along with the project management work that I do for the last 15 or so years. Um, and through that journey that I've been on, I recently decided to capture some of those learnings into a book. And so that's kind of how I ended up here today. Um, and I think there's so many other things I could talk about like myself, but I tend to struggle talking about myself a lot. So maybe uh, some of the questions that we go through might help answer some of the questions our listeners have. Amazing. What is your book about? Yeah, so the book, um, I actually have a copy right here just uh, for those people that want to know a little bit about it. So the title is Always Improving, Lessons from the Samurai. And, and the book is really about learning how to create work-life harmony for yourself through studying the eight virtues of the Bushido Code. And I've found, you know, most of the time in the work that I've done and, and other folks that do the work that I do, and, and not just, you know, quality professionals and project managers, but people leaders and just regular uh, business leaders tend to struggle with, you know, becoming firefighters and having to put out, you know, uh, these fires constantly and you, you, you start questioning whether you're in the right profession or not, because you're not actually, you know, leading people. You're just trying to, uh, be a hero all the time. And so this is meant to help, um, help individuals understand how they can really set themselves up for a little bit more, um, personal success, I guess, as a leader. Amazing. What inspired you to write your book? Oh, you know, there's there's a, a few different, um, I think, reasons that, that this came about. The um, Obviously, you know, if you look at this, the cover, it has a kanji character on the cover, and that is the uh, um, character for harmony or peace. Um, and so I have a, a really long standing, um, appreciation for Japanese culture and, um, I've studied martial arts as a, as a teenager, got introduced to the samurai, uh, and the Bushido code back then. And so, uh, throughout my life, I've had different instances where I struggled with trying to find, um, you know, the harmony that I really wanted. And I kept thinking that I had to chase different things and, and try to fill my life with things that would, you know, give me that harmony that I was looking for. And I didn't realize that it's not a particular thing. It's a, it's a combination of things. And, and, you know, one of those was really getting in tune with my authentic self and, and staying connected to who I am. Um, and so the, you know, the inspiration for why I wrote it really is it's written to myself basically as, as a younger version. So about 20 years ago, before I started getting into different leadership positions and the project management world that I've been immersed in, this is what I wish somebody would have told me back then. Amazing. When you were writing your book, who were you thinking of when it comes to who your book is for? Um, yeah, so originally, uh, you know, like I uh, kind of mentioned a little, it, it was uh, the original intent was for people that are doing similar work as me. So quality professionals, project management professionals. Um, but as I was writing the book and working with my editor, it became a little bit more clear to me that there is some uh, crossover uh, into just people leaders and, and just leaders in general. And so 
the original intent was the quality professional, but it kind of turned into a little bit more than that uh, throughout the whole process. But that was the original intent. And I think people that, uh, you know, kind of identify with the same type of work that I do will really uh, understand a lot of the concepts that I try to talk about because I thread the um, Japanese principle of Kaizen um, in throughout the whole book as well. And so there's, um, there's, there's a nice connection between those two things. Amazing. How long have you been writing and what made you really sit down and start to write your book? Mm. So funny story. Um, when I was in school, like high school, so we're talking 30 years ago, um, I struggled with writing. I struggled with English class. Uh, I think I almost failed every English class I ever took. And a lot of the papers that I submitted for, you know, not only English class, but other classes would, would regularly come back to me uh, to either have it rewritten or, or barely passing. And I think our, my teachers were it's, it's kind of feeling sorry for me and honestly probably didn't want me to come back the next year. <laughs> so they were just kind of helping me, you know, skirt through. Um, and, um, and so I never really thought of myself as a writer uh, for most of my life, honestly. Um, and then a, about a year and a half to two years ago, maybe, I started kind of thinking about, well, you know, w- what would it look like for me to start trying to write um, anything for that matter? And I struggled at first. Um, and and you know, and and so then last year around this time, I was talking to a colleague about my practice that I have around um, you know really developing work life harmony for myself, and and they said, well, you should put that into a book, and and I think I laughed at them. I was like, you don't want me to write a book. <laughs> Probably wouldn't go over so well, and. Um, but then I thought about it for a little while and I was like, well, you know, maybe, maybe I can do this. And, and so I, I started researching, you know, how I could go about that. Um, and yeah, I found a lot of great resources and got connected with an amazing editor who really helped me understand how to write. I think he's the first person that I've ever talked to in my entire life that explained writing in a way that made sense to me. And so, um, so yeah, not only did I get help editing the book, I also got a fantastic education (laughs) along the road. So, uh, so that's kind of like my journey of writing is, is still relatively new. Um, but it's something that I find a lot of joy in, in being able to do and, and being able to, um, you know, spend regular time doing. So it's, it's, it's kind of turned into, uh, yeah, like, like just a huge part of who I am. Um, and for, you know, for a long time, I've been a, a big, uh, reader. Like I love to read, I've loved to read my entire life, but the, the writing part I struggled with. And so, so I'm starting to like make those connections now. And, um, and so, yeah, it, it's it's really turned into um, a, a daily practice. Um, actually, before we jumped on this call, I, I'd spent the morning writing. So it's 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 so weird to say that out loud now. Amazing. That leads into my next question perfectly. What's your schedule like when you're writing a book or in general? Yeah, um, I, I I try to spend you know, time every day writing now. Um, and I, you know, I've actually started my next book. It's actually volume two of, of this series. Uh, I don't have an official title for it yet, but it's, it's in the works. And so probably sometime in 2023, it will be released. 
uh, in, in the early months. Um, but as far as like uh, mapping out the book, um, I don't think that my experience was typical for most people because um, I only started writing my my rough draft back in the beginning of February of this year. Uh, and it, it's now the end of September and my book's been published for all, a month already. And so that's a, from what I've understood, a fairly fast timeline. Um, but I actually use a lot of the practices and principles I use in my project management uh, work to help me write the book. So I basically taught or not taught, I thought of my book as a project basically and so i kind of you know mapped it out. i was like these are the chapters i need to write this is what i need to get completed for each chapter and just really turned it into a project and that made total sense to my brain and then it allowed me to uh to yeah be here talking to you today and so um there's a there's a particular technique that i've used a lot that i find really helpful for writing though and that is the uh pomodoro technique i don't know if you've heard of of this before but for those that haven't heard um and you can easily google this and get tons of information about it um but you basically uh segment 30 minute blocks of time 25 minutes of working and five minutes of not working uh, and you shut off all distractions, you, you know, shut down email, you turn off your phone, you do whatever you need to do to lock yourself away to just get some work done. Um, and I found using that technique was extremely helpful in being able to write the book as well. I just segmented a whole bunch of 30 minute blocks. Um, and yeah, so that, that's kind of, um, and, and for those that know me well, that shouldn't surprise them to hear me say that that's how I approach writing the book. I'm a very analytical thinker. So Amazing. What do you need in your writing space to help you stay focused? Oh, um, I think that's a really great question. Um, one of the things that I absolutely need is to have a cup of tea or, or a cup of coffee beside me. I'm not really sure why <laughs> that is, but I guess I just find some sense of um, comfort, you know, in, in having that close to me. Um, I haven't actually, I, I've just recently read a quote by Ernest Hemingway that said that you should write drunk and edit sober. And I haven't actually tried that yet. And I'm I'm considering maybe giving that a go <laughs> one of these one of these times. But the idea is that when you are a little bit, you know, more under the influence of, of something that you're able to kind of let go of your own personal judgment and your own attachment to what you're writing about, and you can just allow it to free flow. Um, but I also find that when I I carve out time in the morning when when it's still really quiet and still like I get up at 4:30 every day and it's it's still like there's nothing happening anywhere around and I find that the the calmness is just allows me to tap into that creativity a lot easier so amazing what is your favorite writing snack or drink mm Hmm. Um, I think definitely tea. Yeah. I mean, I love tea. I mean, I, I could, I could drink tea at probably any time of the day. Um, and there's, uh, especially, you know, when it starts to get a little cooler outside, like this time of year, like it's starting to get a little colder in Seattle now. And so it's, it's starting to, um, you know, you feel fall is here and, and having a cup of tea is just, it's like, you know, letting your, um, letting your beverage give you a hug. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Love that. 
What type of books do you personally enjoy reading? Ah, my bookshelf is full of nonfiction. Um, there's very few novels um, that I'll, I'll spend time reading, but I, I tend to um, gravitate to, you know, nonfiction written about, um, you know, which shouldn't be a surprise, Japanese culture. Uh, I also read a lot about um, continuous improvement and I always like looking for um, new ways of thinking about those things too. So it's not just like the same old kind of, you know, uh, take on, on a particular concept, but um, looking for, you know, new insights uh, that other people have. Um, but yeah, I think that's would probably be the majority of the books that are on my shelf along with uh, climbing and, and mountain type books, because I, I love spending time in nature and out in the mountains as well. And so, um, yeah. Amazing. Are there any books or authors that inspired you to become a writer? Hmm. Um, uh, that's a really hard question to answer because I, I, I read so many books i don't know if it, it could be pinpointed at one particular individual um but i think just the idea of of a book um and and thinking about like you being able to use a book in like if you don't have the opportunity to have a mentor you know a book can be uh, a a lovely substitute um, while you're searching for a mentor. Um, it's also something that could be used in conjunction with a mentor. So I think, um, but yeah, I don't know that there's like an individual that I could pinpoint, um, because yeah, that's, that's a really hard question. <laughs> what type of books did you grow up reading? Did you have an all-time favorite? Oh man. Um, you know, when I was younger, I used to read a lot of uh, books by, um, you know, like folks like J.R.R. Tolkien, like the Lord of the Rings and, uh, you know, the the nerdy fantasy type books. Um, that was kind of like my jam back then. Um, and I think it was, you know, a, a lot of it tied to the idea of adventure and this idea of um you know a hero uh so i think a lot of the books that i would that i would read were really kind of focused on on that kind of a genre awesome. on the opposite side of that now as an adult do you have a favorite series or series author that if something comes out you're gonna grab it um I think there's a few authors that would fall into that category. Um, there's um, there's a series of books that uh, Masaki Imai has written on Kaizen, which I love his insights. So his first book he wrote, um, man, I think it was like 30 years ago uh, or so. And, and he's just been like adding to that work um, throughout the years. I think, um, there are, there are some other, um, other authors that I wish they would write another book. <laughs> but, and like, because like they're the one book that they've written, I'm just like, man, this is so good. Uh, like what, wh where's the next one kind of thing. And so I think there's, there's a lot of those types of authors on my bookshelf that if they did write another book, I'd be all over it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, um, gosh, although it's not easy reading, um, I, I do enjoy a lot of books by W. Edwards Deming. And unfortunately he's, you know, not able to write anymore because he's not with us, but, um 
if he was able to write another book or if there's like these lost like kind of like you know notebooks or whatever that he had out there i'd most definitely you know grab those amazing what would you tell someone just starting out with reading again with reading oh wow Actually, this it's, it's funny you should ask me that question because somebody just asked me that the other day, which, so this is fascinating. <laughs> but uh, basically what I told them is, you know, don't think about this as like this giant mountain that you have to climb. Think about it like, um, you know, if, if you've ever gone on a hike or climbed a mountain, You'll, you'll realize that it takes many steps to get to the top. It's not something that you can do in one giant leap. Uh, at least I haven't found anybody that can do that yet. And so you think about it in that context and it's just, just take one, one step. So that could be, you know, carve out five minutes and, you know, set a timer. And when the five minutes is up, then you just close the book and, and you go on. Um, but the thing that you have to, in my opinion, the, the, the way that you really make a book come alive for you is have a notebook beside you while you read. Um, and as things jump out off the page for you, jot it down so that you don't forget, like, what was the feeling? What was the idea? What was the thought that I had when I was reading this? Because I think when you do that, it it really makes the the words come more alive for you. Uh, and maybe you'll you'll think of something that you never would have thought of otherwise. So, and then when you come back to pick the book back up again, you can kind of look at the last couple of notes you wrote to yourself to kind of remind yourself, this is where I was when I was reading last time, and this is where I'm kind of picking it up this time. So that would be my advice. Amazing. On the opposite side of that, what would you tell someone just starting to write their own book? Uh, I, I think one of the most helpful tools that I used in, in being able to sort out all of the ideas that I had, because if you've ever written a book, you'll know that um, when you sit down, you have so many ideas You're like, well, I don't know how I'm supposed to like sort all this stuff out. And so one of the tools that I use that really helped me sort that out was using what's called a mind map. Um, and so basically at the center of your page, you just draw a circle and you say, you know, this is the book I'm writing. So, you know, whatever working title you want to put at the center and then outwards from that center circle, you draw all of these lines um, with other circles attached to the end. So it kind of ends up looking like a molecule type diagram when you're done. And you just start putting ideas around the outside of, okay, this is something I could include in this book. And this is something else. And just start mapping it out that way and get all of the ideas that are in your head out of your head and onto a piece of paper. And then you'll find when you do that, it's so much easier to sort it out and say, okay, some of these ideas that I wrote down, maybe they don't really fit together very well, but these other ideas all kind of come together to formulate this, this bigger idea that I have at the center. So that would be my suggestion if you want to get started use a tool like that. I've, I've found that extremely helpful. Love that. What's one thing that people are generally surprised to find out about you? Oh, uh, wow. Um, hmm. Well, I'm originally from Canada. That usually surprises people a lot um, because they're like, oh, you don't sound like you're from Canada. Um <laughs> But I've been in the U.S. now for, um, let's see, just over 20 years. And so, uh, but every time I go home, spend time with my family, I start picking back up on, you know, some of the sayings and some of the, you know, uh, little nuances uh, of the 
the Canadian way of saying things and, and the accent, I guess. Um, but I think that's probably one of the biggest things that surprises people. Um, I think the second thing from that is the fact that I'm, uh, when I, whenever I tell them how old I am, most people don't believe me until I show them my driver's license, um, because they think I look way younger than my age. Um, but those are probably the two things that surprise people the most. I love that. Is there anything you would like to say or add? No, I mean, I think we, we covered a lot about, uh, about the book for sure. Uh, and, and a couple other little things here and there about who I am. And, uh, and I, you know, I do write about a lot of the things in the book more around, like, so people can have a, a an opportunity to get to know me a little better and learn a little bit about how I ended up in where I am and, and why I'm doing what I'm doing. So, yeah, no, this is, this was great. Love that. Where's the best place for readers to find your book? I know a lot of readers love signed copies. Is that an option and the best place that they can connect with you? Yeah. So if you would like a signed copy of my book, the best place to do that is to go to my website. Um, and there's a contact me button where you can send me a message and let me know that you'd like to do that. At this time, I'm only offering that service to residents of the US and Canada, uh, just because the shipping costs are a little prohibitive to go worldwide. Um, I haven't figured out how to do that just yet. Um, and so, yeah, so for the US and Canada, they can go to my website um, and um, I, are, are we going to just put a link in the show notes to my website then? Yeah. So rather than me trying to spell it out, that's probably the easier way. Just hit the link for my website. Um, the book itself, if you'd just like to get a copy of the book, um, the best place to go is to Amazon. Um, and it's being sold on the global marketplace. Um, so no matter what area of the world you find yourself in, you will be able to grab a copy of it if Amazon is an option for you. Um, and we can also put a, um, a universal book link into the show notes as well for folks, uh, if they just like a, an easy way to get to the Amazon of the country that they're in, I do have that link that I can provide you as well. Um, and probably the best place to just connect with me. And if you just want to interact a little bit more with, um, you know, the writing that I do and just, you know, kind of me in general, I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. Um, and so we can also put a link to my LinkedIn profile. Uh, and if you'd like to connect with me or follow me or whatever, I'm always open to expand my network. So, um, so yeah, happy to, uh, you know, interact with people over there. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We'll be sure to drop all those links in the show notes so that it's easy for everyone to find them. And again, thank you so much. Amazing. Thanks, Courtney.